everybody. My name is Kim Hargrave and I'm the Education Director here at the Denison Pequot Seacoast Nature Center. And happy Earth Day to everybody today. And make sure you spend a few minutes outside enjoying Mother Nature. It is a gorgeous day if it's just a bit chilly. What we're going to be talking about today are salamanders. And I purposely chose salamanders for Earth Day because they're a creature that we can find in many places. But North America and the United States in particular is the best place in the world to look for salamanders. We have more salamander species in the United States than anywhere else. And right here in Connecticut, we have 12 different species of salamanders. And what we normally do is we divide our salamanders up into a few different groups. And one of the biggest groups that's most common to people are the mole salamanders. And mole salamanders, sorry, let me adjust my mask here. Mole salamanders are salamanders that live underground. So think about what a mole does. Moles underground and mole salamanders live underground. The most common mole salamander that we have is this one. And this is the spotted salamander. And spotted salamanders are black salamanders. They can be up to 10 inches long and they have yellow spots on them. And we can find these throughout the state of Connecticut. And what's great is at this time of year, they have gone to a special kind of pond called a vernal pool to lay their eggs. And you can check out our Facebook page or our YouTube site and you can actually see a video about vernal pools that includes a picture and a close up of spotted salamander eggs. And these are what spotted salamander eggs look like. All right. Now, I found some of these the other day but I didn't want to collect them. Whenever you see salamander eggs, as tempting as it might be to pick them up and say, I'm going to put them in a really special aquarium at home to watch them hatch, their rate of success is much less when they're in a tank. Please keep them outside in nature, letting them do their job there so those little tadpoles can hatch out. I just said the word tadpoles. Most people think about tadpoles, they think about frogs. But Mole salamanders, like spotted salamanders and marbled salamanders, actually start their lives out as a tadpole under the water. And I have a really cool tadpole salamander right here. I'm going to move some of these leaves out of the way. I found him just the other day, and right after the program today, I'm going to let him go again, right back to the same vernal pool that I saw him. Because Every individual salamander here in Connecticut makes a difference, and I want to make sure this one goes back to where I found it. Now, this is a salamander tadpole right here, and this salamander tadpole is from a special salamander called the marbled salamander. I want you to imagine a black salamander that it looks like someone squirted some white paint down his back. That's what it looks like. They're one of my, they're one of the cutest salamanders, and absolutely my favorite. What's really awesome about this salamander is the female laid her eggs in the fall. So just as the vernal pools were starting to fill up, she went, she laid her eggs, and they hatched out once there was water in the pond or in the pool. And she lived underwater all winter long, this little tadpole did. Now check out those external gills, those things that look like fins sticking out from either side of its head are actually its external gills. It's one of the ways that I can tell that it's definitely not a frog tadpole. I was just going to ask, and I know that this sounds silly, but I always feel like these guys are always smiling and it looks like they have jazz hands for gill slits as they stick out from either side of their head. So we're just going to zoom in so hopefully everyone can see. Yeah, definitely take a look at those gills. They're so cool. Yeah, those textures are pretty neat. All right. So this salamander larva or tadpole has been growing underneath that pool all winter long. And you can see maybe when we zoomed in, maybe you saw the little legs that were already starting to develop. Now remember, salamanders don't lose their tail, so they'll still have a tail when it's all the way grown up. Now, salamanders, very cute, but this guy right here is going to be a little carnivore to finish up his metamorphosis. He is actually going to take advantage of the wood frogs who have laid their eggs and the spotted salamanders who have laid their eggs. And when those tadpoles hatch out, they're really small and our little marbled salamander tadpole might eat a few of those just for some extra energy. 
before he finishes his metamorphosis. Carrie actually has a great comment here that he looks a lot like an oxalotl. And I would say that that is very true as well, right? Yes, he does look very similar to that. Um, but when he finishes his metamorphosis, he will have lungs. So he will be actually a, you know, a land creature, except at, at the in the fall when it goes to lay its eggs. So pretty interesting that way. All right. So mole salamanders, really, really awesome. But the most common salamander for us to find is actually the red-backed salamander. And I have a couple red-backed salamanders for us to see. They're super tiny. But this is the kind of salamander that we often can find in the woods behind our house. And there's an important reason for this. It is these salamanders don't need water to reproduce. Unlike all of our other salamanders that have a tadpole stage that's actually in water, whether it's a vernal pool or a regular pond, these guys have their whole life cycle on land. So these are the ones that you find when you roll over rocks and logs. All right, so I just found these the other day, um, yesterday, and I will make sure I put them right back today because even though these guys are small and tiny, they're still a really, really important part of our local ecosystem. And we so. want to just, uh, I'm going to point out as we're zeroing in on your hands, and Kim, you can kind of fill us in a little bit more, is again, especially right now with everyone using hand sanitizer at home mm -hmm. to stay healthy, it's important that we just admire these with our eyes and not with our hands. So Kim has already gone through the exercise of making sure that her hands are clear of soap clear of hand sanitizer because these guys actually breathe through their skin, right? It's a giant organ. That's right. So instead, when I said these salamanders, the mole salamanders have lungs, these salamanders belong to a group of salamanders that are called lungless salamanders. No, they don't have lungs. And that means they are taking in oxygen through their skin. And we have a, numerous salamanders here in Connecticut that are lungless salamanders. The majority are very small, like this guy right here. So I am gonna hold this one in my hand. Again, if you're holding a salamander, you wanna make sure no soap, no bug spray, no hand sanitizer. And especially in the like summer, that. like no sunscreen. No sunscreen. All right, so if you take a look at this guy right here, you can see how he's crawling around on my hand. Take a look how tiny his legs are. This is a full grown red backed salamander. And I found him by rolling over some logs very carefully. And what I'll do is I'll set him right back next to the log that I found him on. I kind of made a note of where I found him and I'll set him right next to it. I won't put him back under it because I don't want to accidentally squish him. Now, redback salamanders are really awesome salamanders. They have often have a red stripe down their back, just like this guy does. All right. And like all salamanders, they're really good at regenerating parts of their body that they've lost. So I want you to check out his tail. See how his tail is a little stumpy right there? All right. And that means that something probably munched the end of his tail. And it's going to grow back. I'm going to show you another red back salamander that I found. Let's see how this one's doing. Feeling a little more feisty, I guess. And look at its tail. See how it's pointy at the end? And you can also see the red stripe is a little bit more obvious on this one. It is. All right. It's a much more pointed tail there. So what happens is these salamanders will mate and lay their eggs underneath the rocks and the logs. And the mom salamander will actually guard the eggs. Very unusual for amphibians to actually guard their eggs. And she does that. She guards the eggs and then they'll hatch. And she usually lays not that many eggs, only between like 12 and 20 eggs until they hatch. Now, the salamander, remember, it's an amphibian, so it's going through that complete metamorphosis cycle. And that means it starts its life as a tadpole, but instead of swimming around in the water, it actually goes through that cycle inside of its egg. Pretty incredible. So it hatches up and it is a super tiny salamander when it hatches up. So when I was looking for these guys the other day, I did find a baby red back salamander that was probably only a year old, probably from last summer, and it was about an inch long. So imagine a salamander about this long. I wasn't sure that I could safely keep that for a day, so I just left it outside. But definitely worth checking out. Really fun to find them. So red back salamanders, 
don't always have a red stripe. Sometimes you find red back salamanders missing the red stripe. Just to make identification, you know, a little more challenging for you. Now let me see if I can, oh! He Came right to, to the top. <laughs> so if you look right here, this is our red back salamander with no red stripe right there. He's got that just a dark back, missing the red stripe. So we call that a lead backed red back salamander. Oh. All right, so lead back salamanders are actually just a same species of a red back salamander. They can mate, they can interbreed. You will find that if you have lead back salamanders near your house, you might end up with a bunch of them. Um, lead backs are a little less common than the actual ones with the red stripe. Dan just chimed in and said the black variation confused him for a bit. Are there any tips for how to be able to better identify these guys? So the nice thing in Connecticut, well, we have a lot of salamanders compared to other parts in the, of the world. We only have 12 species. <laughs> and so um, I usually can narrow it down by that. The other salamanders that you find often in similar habitats, the four-toed salamander, um, and Cassandra and I were out the other day, we found a four-toed salamander. They have white bellies with black polka dots, so I know that it's not a red back. Um, spring salamanders, all those other types of salamanders are often more in different habitats than this guy. So pretty much if you roll over a log in an upland forest area and you find a salamander that looks like this, it's going to be a red back. Um, Two-lined salamanders, which I can find a little confusing with red backs, are always in a stream environment. So unless you're right next to the stream, you're not going to find them. So I really use, you know, habitat as one of my key indicators for identifying my different salamander species. Now I'm going to put this guy back up here. And I thought that I didn't need to lock the cage, but obviously he proved me wrong there as he was trying to escape. And I want to talk about one other kind of salamander that we have here in Connecticut. It's a really cool one. And what we get them, we get them in localized spots. So you'll find a place where you go hiking that you see them all the time, and you'll go hiking in another place that you think, oh, this is similar habitat, but you won't find any. And it is the red act and the red spotted newt. Okay. So these so we're gonna guys, zoom in. this is the red act right here. <laughs> all right. And this is the red spotted newt, which is what it turns into. Okay, we These have a guys. little bit of glare. Oops. All right, nope, you're good. So you can see those spots that are right along their back. So what happens with these guys is the red spotted newt is an aquatic salamander. It pretty much spends its life in the pond. I was seeing some the other day um, where I was hiking and they were in the pond. They were kind of warming themselves up on the leaf litter underneath the water and they lay their eggs. Their eggs hatch out they are in a tadpole phase, and when they leave the water, they look like this. They're the red app, so they're bright, bright red salamander with tiny red spots on it, or orange salamander. And they are crawling around on the land, and they live there for a few years, and then they head back to the pond where they turn in to the newt to do its aquatic stage. So a really longer and interesting life cycle for these guys. Now, I have to tell you a few things about salamanders, it, which is salamander species are pretty much in decline across the state. Even our more common ones are actually in decline. Um, and it's mostly due to habitat loss. These guys are really sensitive to pollution. Um, so if there's any pollution in their habitat, it can get right into their skin and it can hurt them. If vernal pools are destroyed, or people accidentally don't realize it's a rental pool and dump their leaf litter in so the water can't fill up. These guys won't be able to breed um, appropriately. So super important that we are protecting our habitats, being careful with the habitats around our house, pesticides, herbicides, all those things are really, really hard on these guys. Um, again, what I said about every salamander is important. So if you see a salamander outside, it's absolutely cool. Take a look at it, observe it in its natural habitat, but make sure you leave it there. You don't want to bring it home and make it into a pet or anything like that. These salamanders can actually live a pretty long time. Marbled salamanders can live 10 to 15 years. So can spotted, even these tiny red backs can live several years and it takes them two years to be old enough 
to actually be able to lay eggs themselves. So now, we did have a question earlier about these little um, eastern redbacks. What age do you think that they are, roughly speaking, with them being so small? Oh, well, these are definitely full-grown ones. <laughs> I would say these guys are actually on the bigger size as the ones I was showing you today. So my guess would be probably at least three or four years old. All right, perfect. That helps to ander answer the question that came in earlier from Sandy. So... Um, all these salamanders, really great, really fun. Salamanders are a great way to learn about your local environment. It's really fun to go out and explore. You know, some people are birders, but you can be get into herpetology, which is a study of reptiles and amphibians, and you can go out and, and try to take a look for these guys, see what you have, and you can make notes of them. So that little salamander with the tail that's kind of um, rounded off, I found him the other day, a few weeks ago, and I was really excited when I rolled over the log, and there he was again. So they do live in the same spots. They tend to have their favorite places to be. So you can get to know the salamanders that are near your house and see how they're doing. All right, great. Well, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today. Oh, we do have another question. Um, we're going to be on for another minute or two, so feel free to post your questions in the comments. How long before the eggs hatch for the spotted salamander? Spotted salamanders usually take a couple weeks to hatch, usually um, two to four weeks. It does really depends on temperature outside. Um, we seem to be having a lot of temperature fluctuations lately. I'm expecting most salamander eggs to hatch within another week or a week and a half, though. Now, breeding season for a lot of amphibians has already started. Is that correct? So breeding season for um, marbled salamanders start in the fall, spotted. Um, salamanders has happened, wood frogs have happened, um, so has the peepers are in the middle of their mating season. Um, I, we, I found some toad eggs the other day, um, but it's that I found very interesting. I found those toad eggs, but I have not heard the toads yet at my house. So I think it, it depends on exactly where you live and the little microclimates there. Um, things like gray tree frogs, um, Usually it's more May, bullfrogs in May as well, pickerel frogs um, right now. So it definitely depends on the season, but um, we are starting to see a lot of amphibians breeding. Mostly March through July 1st tends to be where the majority breed. Okay, and then we have another question from Amy who would like to know, is there a way to tell the difference of a male versus a female spotted salamander? So... Um, during when they are in mating season, when you catch them in the water, the males tend to be a little swollen underneath the tails. All right. And it seems like Dan, who chimed in earlier, has been um, having some great success finding different salamanders, um, spotted, four-toed, and redback. So that's Excellent. exciting when you, when you start to learn your amphibians and can come out and explore and find these guys. It's, uh, it's quite a fun treat. So for everyone that joined us today, thank you so much. This is part of our Celebrate Earth programming, which is sponsored by Aquarian Water Company and Stone Ridge Retirement Living Community. We appreciate their support. And so for everyone to just be aware, this is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And while it is a bit chilly outside, as Kim indicated, today is a great day. The sun is shining. So get out and explore, even if it's just walking around your yard. There are so many great things to check out, whether watching birds at your bird feeder or watching them in the woods, or maybe find a good log. Kim had given me a great tip the other day of looking for a log that is the circumference of your arm mm -hmm. and gently rolling that over to see what you might find under there. So everyone, thank you for joining us. We're going to be doing another Facebook Live tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. So join us then. Have a great day and happy Earth Day.